Thank you for viewing this educational program. This module discusses vasectomy. Vasectomy simply involves the blockage and or removal of a small segment of the vas deferens, which is the tube draining sperm out of the testicle, also called the sperm duct. This blocks the flow of sperm from the testicles to the outside. It is meant to be a permanent form of sterilization for contraception and should not be considered if there are any doubts about your desire to have more children in the future. You and your partner should be absolutely certain that you do not want to have any more children. Sperm is made in the testicles, or testes, which sit in the sac of skin called the scrotum. This figure shows the path of sperm as it leaves the testicle, travels through a coiled tube called the epididymis, then enters the vas deferens, also simply called the vas, or sperm duct. The vas leaves the scrotum and travels through the groin, then down into the pelvis beside the bladder to enter the prostate, where it joins the ejaculatory ducts. The vasectomy procedure usually involves tying or clipping and or cauterizing a small section of the vas just above the testicle and possibly removing a small segment. Vasectomy is a time-honored method of sterilization that can be performed in any man without a significant bleeding problem. It is usually an outpatient procedure performed in a doctor's office or clinic. In North America, approximately 7 out of every 100 couples Choose vasectomy for permanent sterilization for family planning. While there are no guarantees with any medical procedure, vasectomy has a very high success rate. Permanent sterilization is achieved in over 99% of patients in most reports in the medical literature. Pregnancy rates following vasectomy range from 0.05 to 0.2%. In summary, vasectomy is a popular method of permanent sterilization because it is a simple procedure, it is safe, highly effective, and relatively inexpensive. Permanent sterilization for a couple can also be accomplished by tubal ligation, where the female partner has her tubes tied. Compared to vasectomy, tubal ligation is more expensive and requires an anesthetic unless being done at the same time as another procedure, such as a cesarean section. Other methods which do not provide permanent sterilization are listed here. These include the birth control pill, hormonal implants, depot hormone injections, hormone patches, barrier methods with or without spermicide, such as diaphragms or condoms, vaginal sponge, intrauterine device or IUD, and the morning after pill. Each method has its own effectiveness, safety, and cost to consider. None are as effective as vasectomy or tubal ligation. There are several common myths associated with vasectomy which we will address up front. Firstly, vasectomy is not a painful procedure for most. The vast majority of them are slick and painless, and the recovery is quick. Some men are also concerned that vasectomy will somehow affect their manliness. What mostly determines someone's manhood, however, is a hormone in the body called testosterone, which is made by the testicles. Testosterone is pumped into the bloodstream as it's made, however, and not into the sperm duct, so levels of testosterone will not be affected by vasectomy. Therefore, following vasectomy, your voice will not change, your hair will not fall out, and your sex drive will remain intact. Likewise, vasectomy will not have any effect on your sexual function. Vasectomy only acts to prevent the passage of sperm out of the body to impair fertility. Sexual function, including erection, orgasm, and ejaculation, is independent of fertility and will not be affected. There is no evidence that vasectomy causes other health problems, including prostate cancer, testicular cancer, and heart disease. It is very important to understand that vasectomy will not protect against the spread of sexually transmitted diseases. Only barrier methods, such as condoms or abstaining from sex altogether, can offer this protection. If your procedure is to be done under local freezing, there is minimal preparation required. Do not take any aspirin or other drugs that might thin the blood in the days prior to surgery, as this can increase the chance of bleeding afterwards. Your doctor will review your medications with you and advise you if and when to stop any medications. Typically, if you are taking a full dose of aspirin, 325 milligrams, you should stop it about seven days prior. If you have any questions about this, call your doctor's office. You should eat a light meal or snack before the procedure. On the day of the procedure, you should bathe or shower as usual and take care to clean the genital area well.
Each doctor will have his or her own way of doing a vasectomy, and similarly, his or her own instructions for care around the time of the procedure. Your doctor will advise you in detail about such things as whether or not any medications are required before the procedure, whether any time off work should be arranged, and whether or not you can drive home afterwards. Some men get a bit lightheaded after vasectomy, so some doctors do advise that you have a ride home arranged. Preferences about shaving are also highly individual. Some doctors ask their patients to shave the area ahead of time, others do it themselves at the time of the procedure, and others advise against it. On the day of the vasectomy, it may be helpful to bring along a clean pair of jockey-style underwear or an athletic supporter. Most vasectomies are performed as outpatient procedures, meaning that you do not have to be admitted to hospital overnight. They can be done at a doctor's office, hospital, or outpatient surgical clinic. Vasectomy is performed using local freezing for anesthesia. In rare cases, the procedure may require sedation or general anesthesia. In general, vasectomy should not take longer than 20 minutes. There are two widely used techniques for vasectomy. Most doctors today perform what is called the no-scalpel vasectomy, where a small puncture is made in the middle of the scrotum or sac, and both sides are accessed through this small puncture site. The traditional procedure involves two small incisions or cuts in the skin, one on each side of the scrotum, to access each sperm duct individually. During the procedure, you'll be asked to lie down on your back, and it is important to stay still throughout. Some hair may or may not be shaved from the scrotum, then the skin will be cleansed with an antiseptic solution. Sometimes this can feel cold. Next, sterile drapes may be used to isolate the area, and at this point, it is imperative to stay very still. The skin and vas are frozen using a tiny needle or with the so-called no-needle device. This may cause some slight burning at first, then the tissues will go numb. The no-needle device uses a blast of air to inject the freezing into the skin without having to use a needle. From here on, you may feel some pulling or tugging, but should not feel any sharp pain. A puncture or incision is made in the scrotum at this time, and a small bit of each sperm duct or vas, in turn, is brought out through the opening. There are different ways to occlude the vas to block the sperm flow. After it is brought out through the skin opening, a small section of it is usually removed, and the ends sealed off with heat or electric cautery. There may be a smoky smell when this happens. Your doctor may or may not use clips or sutures to tie off the ends of the vas. Some doctors do not use cautery. Once the procedure is completed, your doctor may or may not use stitches to close the skin. With the no scalpel technique, most doctors do not use stitches and may simply cover the area with a petroleum jelly such as polysporin. Finally, you will be asked to get up slowly, then after a short period of observation, you will be free to go home. Each doctor will have his or her own instructions for care after the procedure. Many recommend that you cover the wound with polysporin or a similar product a couple times a day. As long as the wound is clean, you may bathe or shower normally the day after the procedure. If you experience discomfort after the procedure, it is best to take an over-the-counter painkiller such as acetaminophen or ibuprofen. Most of the time this will suffice, although some doctors choose to prescribe something stronger. Your doctor will advise you about when you can return to work and other activities. It is commonly recommended to take it easy for a day or two afterwards. It is also helpful when you first get home to gently apply an ice pack such as a frozen bag of peas, to the scrotum, but do not leave it on the area for more than 20 minutes at a time, and do this only once per hour as necessary. Early on, if you develop sudden swelling of the scrotum or bleeding into it, call your doctor. You should avoid sexual activity, strenuous exercises, and heavy lifting for the first week following the procedure. Having said that, many surgeons' preferences will vary. It is normal following vasectomy to have some mild discomfort in the scrotum and some bruising and swelling of the skin, which may take several days to resolve. A slight bit of blood from the wound is also considered normal. It is extremely important to understand that you are not immediately sterile following vasectomy. This is because there is still some live sperm in the system above the level of where the vas was clipped, which takes several ejaculations over a period of several weeks to clear out of the system. You must, therefore, 
use an alternative form of contraception for the first six weeks to few months after the procedure, at which time you should have one or more, usually two, semen analyses performed, as directed by your doctor. These are to confirm that there are no motile sperm left in the semen. Only once you have heard back from your doctor is it okay to discontinue other forms of contraception. It does happen sometimes that the initial semen tests show small numbers of non-motile sperm, and your doctor may ask you to wait longer and repeat testing before giving you the green light to stop using other contraception. It is also important to understand, again, that vasectomy does not protect against the spread of sexually transmitted diseases. So if this is a concern, then other methods, such as condoms, must be continued. Vasectomy is usually a straightforward procedure, and there are few complications associated with it. Having said that, it is a surgical procedure, and as with any surgery, some potential complications do exist. Early on after the procedure, there can rarely be some heavy bleeding into the scrotum, and sometimes this may even have to be surgically drained. The chance of bleeding into the scrotum is about 2% on average overall, and is less common when the no-scalpel technique is used and when the procedure is performed by an experienced surgeon. Wound problems, such as opening of the wound, persistence of a stitch, or infection, are also uncommon events. The average rate of infection reported in the literature is about 3%. Other infections can also occur, such as urinary tract infection and infection of the epididymis. The final, rare early event is loss of a testicle from damage to its blood supply. This would be highly unusual. The most common complications of vasectomy to occur happen usually a couple weeks or so after the procedure. A sperm granuloma is a lump of scar-like tissue that develops as the body's reaction to some sperm that escapes out of the vas. The body does not recognize sperm outside the vas, so it walls it off like it would an infection or foreign material, and the result is called a granuloma. This occurs following 10 to 30 percent of vasectomies, and is usually of no consequence. Sterile epididymitis is a congestion or inflammation of the epididymis, which is the first part of the drainage tube for sperm coming out of the testicle. This appears as a sudden swelling and redness of the scrotum, along with some discomfort one to several weeks following surgery. While the appearance can be striking, this is almost never related to infection and will resolve in a couple days with rest and anti-inflammatories, such as acetaminophen or ibuprofen. True infections within the scrotum or abscesses with a collection of pus are rare. There are two final late complications to be aware of. Rarely, vasectomy can fail to achieve its objective of permanent sterilization. This can happen because of inadequate occlusion of the vas, or when the two ends of the vas somehow reconnect and open up again. This is called recanalization. The likelihood of this happening depends on the technique used, but with the modern technique of vasectomy, the chance is less than half of 1%. It is for this reason, of course, that you must use an alternative form of contraception until your semen analysis confirms that there are no sperm present. Because this rule is not always followed, the rate of pregnancy following vasectomy is in the order of 1.1%. Finally, it is reported that some men can have a lingering pain in one testicle following vasectomy, perhaps due to scarring around the nerves that run near the vas. The chance of this happening is said to be somewhere between 1 in 1,000 to 1 in 10,000. In the past, concern was raised about a possible link between vasectomy and prostate cancer. However, it is now clear that there is no evidence that vasectomy causes prostate cancer. The likely reason for the observation that prostate cancer is more commonly diagnosed in men who have had a vasectomy is that these men are simply more likely to see a doctor and therefore be diagnosed with prostate cancer. As emphasized already, vasectomy is meant to be a permanent form of sterilization and should only be undertaken if this is clearly the desire of the couple. Having said this, of course, Life circumstances can change, and about 5 or 6 percent of men overall will later seek reversal of their vasectomy. This is especially true of men who are younger at the time of vasectomy. While it can be successful, vasectomy reversal is expensive, and there is no guarantee of success. Overall, about 90 percent of men will have sperm present in the semen after reversal, and about 50 percent of couples will achieve pregnancy. The success of reversal 
depends mostly on how long it has been since the vasectomy. In summary, vasectomy is a time-honored method of permanent sterilization that is relatively simple, highly effective, and safe. It is important to understand what the alternatives are and that, as with any surgical procedure, certain complications can occur, such as bleeding, infection, pain, and failure. Following the procedure, it takes time for the sperm to clear from the system, so semen testing to confirm success of the procedure 6 to 12 weeks afterwards is mandatory prior to discontinuing other forms of contraception. This concludes our presentation on vasectomy. This sample of recent articles, which were used to assist in the preparation of this module, is available for your review through the internet or your local medical library, should you wish to do more reading on this subject. These references were also used. Thank you again for viewing this educational program. Achieved in over 99% of patients in most reports in the medical literature. Pregnancy rates following vasectomy range from 0.05 to 0.2%. In summary, vasectomy is a popular method of permanent sterilization because it is a simple procedure, it is safe, highly effective, and relatively inexpensive. Permanent sterilization for a couple can also be accomplished by tubal ligation, where the female partner Thank you for viewing this educational program. This module discusses vasectomy. Vasectomy simply involves the blockage and or removal of a small segment of the vas deferens, which is the tube draining sperm out of the testicle, also called the sperm duct. This blocks the flow of sperm. Vasectomy is a time-honored method of sterilization that can be performed in any man without a significant bleeding problem. It is usually an outpatient procedure performed in a doctor's office or clinic. In North America, approximately 7 out of every 100 couples choose vasectomy for permanent sterilization for family planning. While there are no guarantees with any medical procedure, vasectomy has a very high success rate. Permanent sterilization is a chill tube called the epididymis, then enters the vas deferens, also simply called the vas or sperm duct. The vas leaves the scrotum and travels through the groin, then down into the pelvis beside the bladder to enter the prostate, where it joins the ejaculatory ducts. The vasectomy procedure usually involves tying or clipping and or cauterizing a small section of the vas just above the testicle, and possibly removing a small segment. Sperm from the testicles to the outside. It is meant to be a permanent form of sterilization for contraception and should not be considered if there are any doubts about your desire to have more children in the future. You and your partner should be absolutely certain that you do not want to have any more children. Sperm is made in the testicles, or testes, which sit in the sac of skin called the scrotum. This figure shows the path of sperm as it leaves the testicle, travels through a coil